So, it's me, Ellie. If this is a bad phrase to start my videos with, just tell me, I will think of something else. Obviously, this is my very first video on this channel and in this video I will tell you about me, my life, why I started this channel and the main thing is how I moved to South Korea. So all K-pop fans, K-drama fans and just all of you guys who love Korean culture, stay tuned. First of all, I should introduce myself. My full name is Elvira, but when I communicate with foreigners, I usually say like Hi, I'm Ellie. It's not like I try to make myself a new name. I just think that it's easier to pronounce and to memorize. So yeah, just Ellie is okay. I'm 26 years old and I am from Moscow, Russia. Actually, originally I'm from another city and even from another republic in Russia. This is not the topic of this video, but if you want to know how is it possible to have two mother languages, one passport and different nationality, let me know in the comments and I will make another video about it. What's more important is that I finally came to South Korea and now I live in Seoul and I am a student of a Korean language course of the Kyonbok University. Oh, and also I should apologize for my English because obviously I am not a native English speaker and even the fact that I have been learning English since the fifth grade at school doesn't make me a perfect English speaker, so sometimes I may make some mistakes when I speak, so really sorry about it, guys. So my, so to say, love story with South Korea started in 2019, when I first found out about BTS. Yes, yes, I know this is so cliche, but yeah, everything started with BTS. <laughs> so my niece, she's 16 years old now, she used to talk about some boys band all the time. She was always on her social media watching some videos and some new pictures and laughing about it. In most cases, it was just something really funny, so she was just bursting out laughing. And I didn't know why, I was just so confused asking her all the time like, hey, what are you watching again? What is so funny about it? And she was like, ah, you won't understand anyway, you don't know them. A little TMI about me is just, since childhood, I just hate when I don't know something. I don't know why, but all the time, like about anything, I have to know everything. I was really curious and mad at the same time, so I asked her to tell me more about these BTS guys. And I still remember her face when I asked her about it. She was like, are you sure about it? Do you really want to know? And I was like, yeah, sure, of course I want to know. What's the big deal about it? Uh, I just didn't know what I was getting into. So she sent me a playlist of their, like, let's say, most famous songs. And actually, I didn't listen to only famous songs. I listened to every album. I watched every music video. And I watched all the TV shows from the very beginning. Of course, I couldn't focus on every little thing because they made a lot of content through all these years. But it was a really good journey. I had so much fun. And now I know all the legendary phrases and and jokes like Jimin you have no gems or Lachi Molala and such things. So ARMY if you see me right now I hope you understand what I'm talking about. And of course I started to learn Korean. Actually um, one more TMI about me. I'm really obsessed about foreign languages. I have two mother languages as I already mentioned it's Russian and Tatar language because my nationality is Tatar. So I learned English and German and as my second mother language is Tatar language, I can also speak a little Turkish. I also started to learn Italian, but I stopped it for some personal reason. Hopefully I will start learning Italian again a little bit later maybe. And now it's Korean. Wow, my brain is just a completely different language with different letters, with different language structure and system. And it's actually not really easy. I think that many of you guys who also started to learn Korean understand what I'm talking about and actually share your thoughts about it. How is it going with Korean learning? So I thought that it would be good if I had somebody who would help me with learning Korean. 
you know, like I could ask this person about some things that I don't understand, for example, in grammar, or maybe I could ask about the meaning of some words that I don't know and don't understand. So I thought that, yeah, it would be good to have a Korean friend. And that's why I thought that I should try Kakao Talk. Maybe some of you don't know, but Kakao Talk is the main social media in Korea. More, I think that all people in Korea use Kakao Talk, and actually, it's not just a messenger when you can text your friends and family, you can do online shopping. Shopping. You can get payments, you can, I don't know, get presents for your birthday. So it's a really a thing in Korea. And I just thought that, hmm, that's interesting. I should use it too. I should try it too. So I just downloaded Kakao Talk. I made my account. I uploaded my selfie, the only picture on my account. And that's it. I didn't do anything. And I was really surprised that the next morning that I woke up, I saw so many notifications like this guy texted you, that guy like send you a message. I am not that kind of girl who used to get a lot of attention from guys, you know? So yeah, that was really shocking for me. But actually I should warn you that in Kakao Talk, there are not only Korean people. Of course, there are other foreigners uh, using this application. So if you also start to use Kakao Talk, don't be surprised that there won't be only Korean people texting you. So there were all these guys started to texting me and there were Korean guys too of course I should say that I wasn't hoping to find a boyfriend on Kakao Talk as many of girls may think that uh, to have a Korean boyfriend is just a dream of all the K-popers of course no I heard so many stories from foreign girls how Korean guys started to you know flirt with them and trying to start relationship with them but it's not always a good thing actually Korean guys they know about BTS and how they are famous in other countries and that the Korea now is really popular so they actually try to use it so in most cases they will just spend some time with you and then just leave you alone even without saying goodbye to you I had a couple of Korean guys texting me too they texted me for a couple of days but then they just disappeared some guys even blocked me so I couldn't text them back but one Korean guy he didn't disappear he continued texting me and I was like well, maybe five days more and he will stop texting me. But he didn't stop. And I was like, mm, that's weird, but okay, let's see what would happen. But then suddenly he starts to play guitar and sing for me. And I was like, a couple of songs and then he will stop doing all this. But he didn't stop. So as you understand, that's how I met my boyfriend, my Korean boyfriend. Ta-da! <laughs> so anyway, that was the end of 2020. And we kind of made it official, became a couple. At the beginning of 2021, I started to think how I can come to Korea to finally meet him. I was hoping to ask my boss to give me a vacation for the whole month so I could come to Korea, spent uh, 14 days at quarantine. As you all know, this pandemic situation already started. So I thought that I will spend 40 days at quarantine. Then I spent two weeks with him. I should also mention that at that time, Korea and Russia, they had this no visa rule. So for example, I didn't have to make a tourist visa or any kind of visa to go to Korea. Of course, the same thing vice versa. So I was just so happy that I will finally see him and I already bought the tickets and we were just so glad. We were both really waiting for this day when we finally meet. And then this pandemic situation got worse. First thing what happened is that they canceled this no visa rule. So now I have to get my tourist visa to go to Korea. I was like, okay, I don't care. I already bought my tickets, so it's okay. I can make this tourist visa and I will go to Korea. One week later, I find out that they canceled the tourist visa. So the Korean embassy in Russia won't give tourist visa anymore. And of course, I was really sad. We were both really sad. I was crying and worrying about how can we meet now. And my boyfriend was kind of trying to cheer me up. He said that, don't worry, we will meet a little bit later. This situation will get better soon. So we will meet, you can come later. And I was like, okay, I canceled my tickets and was just waiting for the better day to go to Korea. But the better day didn't come. 
as you all know, the situation got worse and worse every day. And then I thought, okay, I have to find another way to come to Korea. And that's when I found out about this KGSP scholarship or JKS scholarship. I think that many of you guys know that KGSP is a scholarship that gives you opportunity to get a higher education in Korean university. And then after graduation, you can even find a job in Korea in I mean stay in Korea. So I thought that it's a good opportunity for me and when I decided to apply for the scholarship it was maybe two weeks before the official announcement of the beginning of this application process. So spoiler I didn't get the scholarship. There are just so many students around the world who also want to go to Korea and they work really hard to get the scholarship. So of course I didn't even had a chance because I couldn't speak Korean but even though I could speak English, I didn't have any certificates proving it. So I never passed any kind of language test like TOEFL or TOEIC or what else, IELTS and other kind of language tests. And I think that my motivation letter wasn't good enough. In Russian it's called motivation letter, but I, I'm not sure if it's the same in English. I don't know, tell me guys. Motivation letter is actually the letter where you prove that you're really worth this scholarship that you really the person who has to get the scholarship. So I didn't get the scholarship and then I thought, okay, I have to find another way to go to Korea. So another way to go to Korea is actually a Korean language course. So you can actually get the student visa for six months and start learning Korean language in Korea. But there was another problem for me, money, because Korean language courses are not for free. You have to pay for them and here i should say that my family is not rich i don't have a father and my mother works as a teacher in the kindergarten and my younger sister is just a university student so we didn't have that much money and as i had a job i tried to save my salary so that i could go to korea i don't know why but something always happened so i couldn't save my money something just happened and I had to spend money again so I really I just couldn't save my money for my language courses and I was telling my boyfriend don't worry I will come to you I will get to these courses in spring but I couldn't save my money for spring course and I was like okay maybe not in spring but in summer I will finally go there but in summer of course I couldn't save my money again so me and my boyfriend we started to argue about it because it was mentally really hard to wait for each other for so long and sometime we even broke up for a while because I mean it was really when you have a long distance relationship you have to know this date when the when you finally meet so without this date we didn't know when we could meet so yeah we broke up for a while and <laughs> for a while i mean for two days because after two days he texted me something like oh i can't leave without you of course you can't i mean me too i think i was just hoping for a miracle all this time but this miracle finally happened. My family finally got to sell our previous apartment in the city when we lived before. And we wanted to buy another apartment in Moscow district. So I thought that this is the chance for me. So I came to my mom and said like, hey, can I please take some money for my study? And actually at that time, I already applied for these courses. So I mean, I already sent my document. I think that was really like, I don't know, crazy because i was hoping that my mom will understand me and give me money and let me go to korea but she said no and i was really sad i didn't know what to do because a little bit later i got an answer from the university and they said that yeah congratulations we're happy to see you as our student in our university and i'm like wow cool thank you but i don't have money what should i do so it was really a hard time for me we had a really serious talk actually many talks with my family and i cried a lot we argued a lot and my mom couldn't really understand why i want to go to korea so bad because i didn't really tell her about my relationship i mean she knew about some guy in korea who is interested in me but i think she just didn't realize what kind of relationship we had anyway i don't want to make this story too long so she finally agreed to give me some money and i paid for my courses and then 
then I started to work on my student visa. And this is actually another story because I would tell you that Korean embassy in Moscow, they made so many rules that make it so difficult to get a visa. Not even to get a visa, to get an appointment to this embassy to get a visa. So first of all, you need to send them an email saying that blah, 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 my name is this and that, my number is this, so I want to apply for this kind of visa. You have to wait for their answer. They should send you an email saying that at this day, at that time, we are waiting for you in our embassy. So it means that you can't just come to embassy with your documents and just apply for the visa. You can choose the day and the time when you can go to the embassy because they will choose this time for you. I've been waiting for the answer for three weeks. We even tried to call them like, hey, why you don't answer my email? And they said, oh, we're really sorry. We have so many emails, so you just have to wait. I mean, if you have many emails, why don't you hire more people who could answer these emails? I mean, this is really stupid. Anyway, I had to reschedule my start of my Korean course because I was planning to come in December, but I couldn't apply for visa for so long, so I had to reschedule for January. So anyway, three weeks later, three weeks later, they answered me and I finally applied for my visa. I had to wait for two weeks. Then I got my visa and I bought the tickets. I started to pack. I was just so nervous. Even though it was a nervous time, but it was the happiest time of my life, I think, because I've been waiting for this the whole year. This whole year since 2020, I was trying to get to Korea. It was like a nightmare for me. But I got my dream come true, one of my dreams come true. And now I am in Seoul, Korea, and uh, I started to learn Korean language here. Actually, I didn't start from the first level. I actually had a test before our classes started. So I started from the second level. And yeah, the study is kind of harder than I thought, but it's really fun. And if you want to know more about this study process, how it's all going, I can make another video about it and yeah, just let me know. So basically why I started this channel? Actually, it was my idea for a long, long time, but I was really scared because it's English language. It's different. You have to control your every word. You have to think about what you say. You have to build a sentence in your mind and then say it. So I thought it's kind of hard and it's actually hard right now. I'm really nervous how you guys will react to this video, but it's actually a challenge for me. I hope that I can make it and on this channel I will tell you about Korean life, Korean culture, I will show you some places where I go here in Korea and maybe if you want I can make some K-pop music video reaction or maybe I can tell you about Korean cosmetics and other things. So I really hope that you will let me know what you want to see on this channel connected with Korea and Korean life of course. So I think that's it for today. So like, share and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video video. Bye-bye!